Welcome to Porto, Portugal. Located along the Douro River estuary in northern Portugal, Porto is one of the oldest European cities, and its centre was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1996. Porto offers as much cobbled street charm and dazzling ancient architecture as you'll find anywhere else in Europe. It's nestled in one of the world's leading wine regions, and yet it's still uncrowded and an affordable place to be. There is a lot to love about Porto, with the diversity of the city appealing to a wide range of visitors. Porto is also an excellent sailing destination, its Atlantic coast dotted with plenty of pleasures and treasures for sailors to discover. The legacy of Portugal's sailing history isn't hard to find, and those exploring with a boat will have plenty to keep themselves amused. In Porto, as we can see, besides, you know, the atmosphere that is around here, that people will be, we are on the Atlantic here, so perfect conditions for sailing and um, I would say that Portugal of course is a seamanship country where we have uh, everything uh, and very good places to, to sail huh? from south to north and here we are in Porto. At night Porto is the ultimate destination for sailors who spent their days sailing and exploring the ocean, looking for a beautiful place to walk and relax. The city's historic atmosphere means Porto really shines under the moonlight. It's on the Atlantic front, but you can have a mix of everything. Uh, you have great beaches all around, and then you come inside and you have the Douro, which is for me, the most beautiful river in the world. You can have great wine experience, great, great hotel experiences, great underwater activities. Um, it has a great uh, history. The city has been around uh, in, the, in the tourism panorama for a lot of times. So we have been receiving a lot of international tourism awards. What we feel that we can give to people that come here is great hospitality a great friendly environment. People are, people are, I'm not talking about myself, but people are very, very nice, very friendly. They're willing to help in everything they, they do and they want to do. Um, and, and I think that makes quite a, uni a unique set uh, uh, for people to come. And then for sure you have great, great food, which I'm sure you experience and everyone has experienced. You have uh, nice people, you have uh, a lot of different activities you can run. The Finn Gold Cup returned to Portugal this year for only the third time in its 65-year history, with Bibi Duro and Duro Marina hosting the last major event before the Olympic Games in Tokyo. On both previous occasions Portugal hosted the Finn Gold Cup, it was held in Cascais. The 2021 Finn Gold Cup was organized by Bibi Duro and Duro Marina with the support of the municipalities of Porto, Matosinhos and Vila Nova de Gaia. Here, the new world champion would be determined, as well as the final two places for the Olympics. There was still one European place and one African place to complete the fleet of 19 taking part in the Games. The qualification makes it a lot more, um, a lot more tricky for, for a lot of the competitors. I'm, I'm the only African entry at this event. I was hoping to have a, a few more to, to pace against. 
Also for me, it's very important to get good results here to, to prove to my country that I'm, I'm competitive at the games. Um, that's sort of what, what my, my um, qualification relies on. So for me, it's, it's important to show a bit of speed here. So yeah, it's def definitely on. Everyone was expecting the competition for the final European place to be intense, with a large number of sailors challenging for it. However, the battle has narrowed over the past year, with several sailors forced to give up following the year-long postponement of the Olympics. Yeah, so this event uh, will be the last qualifying event for the Olympic Games. Uh, obviously, Switzerland doesn't have a spot yet, so I'm going to try to get that last spot. Uh, the level is really high, so I expect a great battle for that spot. We are here now in Porto for the Fin Gold Cup. Will be the best and main event for the qualification. Last chance for the qualification for Europe. We are here to try to qualify the country because it's the last chance to get the Olympic ticket for Europe. Uh, France is not selected yet, so uh, I will have to really push and uh, do a good championship to have a chance to, to be selected for the, the Games in Tokyo uh, next uh, summer. I have some uh, strong uh, challengers around me. There is a lot of very good sailors. There is some young and some uh, less young, like me. But uh, we still uh, are very uh, focused and we will try to get the ticket. There's actually only one ticket. And for, uh, but uh, I think the, the key will be to finish top three, probably, in this regatta. Seems to be very difficult, especially with uh, Joan Cardona and Neil Standing. Uh, these guys are sailing really good. They finished third and fourth in the Europeans last month, and uh, so the level is really high. Of course, there are more guys, and everything can happen. It will be a really stressful regatta, and the uh, pressure will come. But uh, yes, it will be, it will be hard, but uh, of course, everybody has a chance, and uh, I think it will be close at the end. In Duro Marina, we found one of the most legendary athletes in the world. Giles Scott is a four-time Finn Gold Cup winner and won the gold medal for Team Great Britain in the Finn class at the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Having dominated the class, Scott secured his place in the history books, winning the gold medal with a day to spare. Let's learn a little more about him. Uh, I started sailing on a gravel pit in the Midlands in the UK. I grew up uh, away from the seaside and just uh, learned in a, you know, on a reservoir, small reservoir, uh, in an Optimist dinghy. I suppose it's, it's a passion, it's a way I earn a living, it's, um, it's everything really. Um, it's become, yeah, it's become all-encompassing all and I think it's, uh, it, it switches that way for, for a lot of us. Uh, it's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a bit of a drug you get, a, you get addicted to. One of the reasons why I love the sport so much is that no day is the same. Um, I mean, I've been sailing fins now for 12 years and I sail lots of different types of boats and there's, there's always something different out there. And even if you're sailing the same boat, every day is different anyway. So um, it's, uh, it's not, it's not never feels that repetitive or that mundane. Um, there's always something different to get into. Some of the best fin sailors in the world gathered in Porto, with many medals in Olympic Games and America's Cup between them. Competing alongside them were legendary sailors like Spain's Geraldo Selinger, who first competed in the fin event at the 1972 Summer Olympics, as well as being president of the fin class for 18 years. Uh, historically, I think the best fin sailors became a medalist when they were between 28 and 35 years old. Valentin Manki, Josu Isdorete, etc., etc. But now we have a new generation coming from the laser. And I think that is the beauty of the fin. Because you start with the optimist, then you move to the laser, then you move to the fin. And from there you move to the America's Cup, you move to the Volvo Ocean Race, you move to the Vendée Globe, to all these international regattas. It is a very logical step upwards from the Optimist to the America's Cup. And it's a chain, a, a part of the chain which we cannot miss. A 
Over the last year, sporting events around the world have been affected by the global outbreak of COVID-19. Sailing and the Finn class haven't been immune to the impact from the pandemic, with major international events postponed. Porto and the organizers from BB Douro and Douro Marina did their best to ensure that safety for all was guaranteed and that all the legal and sanitary requirements were rigorous in order to launch a very demanding international event. Yeah, it's really important for us to have the, be back racing at the Finn Gold Cup after uh, two years break. One missed out the Gold Cup last year, uh, so we haven't raced in the Gold Cup since uh, Melbourne 2019. So it's uh, wonderful to be back and it's uh, my first major championship since the, since the pandemic started. So uh, yeah, great to be back racing with the boys. But it's time for the race to start and for some great sailing to unfold. Let's start the race. Vamos começar as regatas. With 52 sailors registered across a total of 31 countries, the 2021 Porto Finn Gold Cup kicked off with light to medium winds and constant changes in the pole position over the three races sailed. Luke Muller, the American representative at Tokyo 2020, won the first race, while the second race of the day was dominated almost entirely by Spanish sailors. Juan Cardona came in first, with New Zealander Andy Maloney coming in second position, ahead of Spain's Alejandro Muscat. European champion, Hungarian sailor Zomba Beretz won the last race of the day, leaving Spaniard Juan Cardona and Argentine Facundo Aleza to take the second and third positions. In fact, this is the last uh, regatta before the Olympics. So finally, we also have the Kiwis, who are the defending champion now uh, of the World Cup. So it's, I think this is the last uh, final test before the Olympic Games. So everybody will bring the best what he can. And, uh, will be a good measure point, I think, before the game. The US's Luke Muller scored a bullet in the starting race of the regatta, proving his great condition just weeks before Tokyo. The American is preparing for his first Olympic Games and feels a profound responsibility to represent the US sailing community. Yeah, so this is my last major competition before the, my first Olympic Games appearance and uh, I worked really hard back in the US to, uh, to improve my skills in preparation for this event and came a few weeks early to Porto and try to test out the conditions and make sure everything was good. Um, I had a lot of fun training against my training partners and uh, I felt really solid coming into the event and uh, hopefully I can finish strong on the last day. The following two days, Atlantic storms combined with huge ocean waves meant that it wasn't safe to return to the sea. Racing was cancelled, with the waves battering the harbour entrance in the afternoon after the complete lack of wind that morning following overnight storms. We're looking to have at least one race. The, the limitations that we have is that um, currently there's very little wind. By midday, uh, one o'clock, the wind should be filling in and we're expecting anything between 10 and 14 knots this afternoon from a west-northwest direction. However, a big feature on the race course today and at the harbour entrance is a three metre swell, which is causing some concern for the harbour authorities about the safety of the fleet getting in and out of the harbour. The third day, sailors waited for several hours at sea but unfavorable wind conditions did not allow the three races scheduled for the day. Well, today we, uh, we went out early. The last few days we've had some big seaway. Um, it was forecast to be three meters. I think, well, today it felt bigger than three meters, but it might have been three meters. Either way, it was uh, very big out there and the, the wind was very shifty. Lots of rain squalls coming through, wind shifting through about 100 degrees almost. Um, and it, it really made the, the racing impossible for the, for the race officer to get anything away. Uh, the wind dropped towards the end and um, unfortunately we lost the window with the, the, the outwash of the river and the, uh, the harbour entrance here. 
um, getting a bit, bit too, uh, bit too dangerous. So yeah, we're in early. No racing. The sailors used this break to relax, and it was a good chance for them to discuss their thoughts regarding the future of the class at the Olympics. It turned to wider conversations regarding the Paris 2024 events. Many of the sailors are reflecting on the current state of the process, especially in regard to the Finn Olympic status. Now they should definitely keep the Finn in the Olympics. It's uh, right now I think it's one of the classes with the absolute highest uh, competition uh, level of competition, and uh, it's the only class for men over 85 kilos to to race. Uh, with such a depth in the class, uh, on on uh, on the guys there are two meter tall and. Uh, and the guys who are a bit, uh, a bit wider on the shoulders. So, um, yeah, I'm sad to see it goes if, uh, if they make the, that decision final and uh, they will lose a great, um, great dinghy and a great maker of uh, big sailing mates. I think the Finn now uh, have a lot of young guys coming and uh, they are expecting to, to be living the Olympic dream in some, uh, in some ways. And it would be a shame if the, the boat is not there anymore, but we have also to look forward and uh, see what is going on around us. And uh, in some ways, the fin is looking a little bit old school, but uh, it's also the, I mean, the heart of the sailing. There's obviously the, the world, is, the world sailing is in a bit of a mess right now with what, what's happened with the classes. And in honesty, from a sailor's point of view, the way it's been handled is well, it's just, it's disastrous really. Um, it's in a tricky spot now. Um, and yeah, there is, a still, there is still a chance, I think, that the Finn can, uh, can remain in the Olympic Games. And obviously, I hope that that's, that's the case. Um, but I think the, the fundamental thing that, that World Sailing have to get right is that the classes have to represent the people that sail. Um, and, you know, we're, as Finn sailors, as bigger single-handed sailors, we're a, we're a big part of the, the greater sailing population that needs to be represented in the Olympic Games. And if some of the submissions go through that have um, been uh, put forward that, that exclude the fin, I think that's, that's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a travesty. So I started sailing fins uh, in 2014, the first year of my university. Uh, I started sailing the fin because I was simply too big for the laser. Um, and that's really why it's a shame that the fin is being taken out of the Olympics because it takes away the option of participating in the Olympic Games for an entire weight class. The reason why a lot of fin sailors sail the fin is simply because it's suited to their, to their body type. And it'd really be a shame for an entire class of athlete to be removed from the Olympic Games in sailing. After no racing for two days, everyone was happy to get racing again in a day with a variety of weather conditions. It was a day of thirds, with a very gentle opening race of six to eight knots, followed by clearing skies and a slightly tougher race of 12 to 14 knots, before finally clouding over and picking up to 14 to 16 knots in the final race. New Zealand's Andy Maloney extended his lead to go ahead by five points into the final day. In the very light first race, Brazil's Jorge Zarif scored a bullet. Winner of the second race of the day was Nenad Bugarin from Croatia, while in the third race, Junior and his co-patriot Maloney did the one-two. Yeah, it was great to be at the front of the fleet with Josh for the first race of this event, you know, and to cross the finish line 1-2 is um, really cool and something that we obviously strive to do every race, so it's cool to do it. Kiwis Maloney and Junior were sailing their first major fin regatta for 15 months after timeout for the America's Cup and Sail GP. So their performance was particularly impressive as they prepare for the Olympics. You know, today's the fourth day of the Fin Gold Cup and it's looking like it's going to be a pretty awesome day with uh, onshore breezes and sort of 10 knots. So, yeah, can't wait to get out there. Hopefully, we get three races in and catch up a bit. Uh, I guess Andy and I have just jumped back into the fin after the America's Cup. So, we're just looking to check in where we are with the fleet and, and how everyone's developed and, you know, where we can improve looking forward to the Olympic Games. So, yeah, we're just checking where we are and, and trying to race as well as we can.
At the same time, the Tokyo 2020 European Continental Qualifier was heading for a nail-biting conclusion, with four sailors inside the top ten. Spain's Juan Cardono was fourth, but only six points ahead of Croatia's Nenad Bugarin. While the European bronze medalist Nils Toynik from Switzerland was in ninth place, a further 17 points back. On the final day, everyone awaited a close and intense battle for the last ticket. We are on the last day of the championship, uh, still uh, three more races to, to finish the, the regatta and uh, happy with my position uh, so far. I think still is everything open uh, to qualify and also quite, uh, quite close to the podium, I believe. So everything is still open and I believe if I do my best today that everything gonna end up well. Yes, today is the day. It's the day I've been waiting for the last four years. Of all my training has been focused on today and this championship. And I'm very looking forward to it. I feel very confident. And yeah, the main goal is to achieve the Olympic ticket for Spain. And then if we get a medal in the walls, it would be amazing also. The day was full of close battles and great sailing moments, with the title open until the very last race. Andy Maloney led the 2021 Porto Finn Gold Cup from the first to the last day, despite a brief loss of the lead midway, and did just enough to take the cup away from his teammate, Josh Jr., who won in 2019 and this year finished third. Oh, it's just, just awesome to win the Finn Gold Cup. You know, I haven't won an Olympic class world championship before, so for me, this is my first one and it just feels amazing. Um, the conditions all week were really tricky, you know, lots of current and lots of big shifts. So it feels, feels pretty good to have it done. <laughs> yeah, no, Josh, you know, he sailed well all week and it's awesome to have him on the podium alongside me. You know, it would have been nice if he could have picked the Spanish, Spanish guy and got onto second, but, you know, to have Kiwis one and three, that's really cool. And, you know, we're always striving to be one and two in the world, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, what a day. I mean, this was the last day of the Finn Gold Cup. Um, both Andy and I were in the mix coming into it and uh, Andy came away with the win, which is super exciting, and I managed to finish third, so. Overall, we're wrapped and, and we couldn't have expected any more, so super happy. It took 63 years for New Zealand to win its first Finn Gold Cup, and now two have come along in a row. The Kiwis were the ones who best adapted to the difficult conditions imposed by the Atlantic in the four days of competition of the Finn Class World Championship. You know, yeah, New Zealand, you know, we had never won the Finn Gold Cup before Josh did it uh, last in 2019 in Melbourne. So, you know, to keep it, to win it now and to keep it in New Zealand, it's pretty cool. At the same time, Juan Cardono fought hard against Bugatti and took the silver medal, as well as winning the last European continental qualifier and selection for Spain in Tokyo. Leo Davis also qualified South Africa for Tokyo in the African Continental Qualifier. Yes, the day was quite difficult. It was super tricky out there and uh, we had some rain also in the morning and it was not easy, but I managed to have a good day overall and, and get the spot for Spain, so I'm very happy. We are the last country to get the spot. I think we are very good prepared, we work really hard as a team. I really hope the, the best is yet to come in, in Tokyo and I'll give my best for it. Due to COVID restrictions, a fairly simple prize giving ceremony took place to conclude the event, with the champions holding their trophies aloft, accompanied by the applause of their friends. At the same time, the championship was environmentally friendly, with the organizers awarded the world's only sustainability certification for water-based events with the Sailors for the Sea Prize. A world championship is always an event with mixed feelings, um, but the common factor on the winners and, and, and the not winners is that everyone is very happy. Uh, everyone loves the Doro Marina, the staff and the team that run the event on the water and the races. Um, a Porto delivered great conditions, great selling conditions, challenging, very challenging. But uh, we can have no better reward than uh, people that were not going to stay in Porto after the event are now going to stay in Porto and in Doro Marina after the event to prepare themselves for the Tokyo Olympic Games. So, happy days.
With nine races completed, the world elite of the Finn class said goodbye to BB Duro and Duro Marina. After an intense week of competition and several days of exploring the cities of Porto, Matosinhos and Villanova de Gaia. Next stop for the Finn class is the Olympics for Tokyo 2020.